Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are solving continuous compounding for compound interest in this problem using the formula A equals P times E to the RT. If you've just arrived here from our discrete compounding interest video, we want to make sure that you have knowledge of logarithms before you approach any of these. So if you haven't done anything with logarithms and you need some information on those first, check out our video on solving exponential equations using logarithms. So in our problem here, we say if $1,750 is compounded continuously, and remember those are the words that tell us we're going to use our A equals PERT equation, at 3.2%, that's our interest rate, how long will it take us to accumulate to $2,500? Okay, so notice we are starting with 1750 So this is our principle here. We're compounding continuously, so we use this formula. Our rate is 3.2%. Our rate in the formula as a decimal is going to be 0.032. Remember, as a decimal, we'll always move it over two places. Right here, it says, how long will it take to accumulate to $2,500? So this is our accumulated value. Our ending value is 2,500. And here it says, how long will it take? Means that we are solving for t. So we will use our equation and we'll leave t in the equation and plug everything in. So we will get a equals, which is 2,500 equals 1,750 times e to the r times t. So that's going to be to the 0 0.032 times t. Now I want to solve for t, and t is in the exponent. So what I'll need to do first is get this exponential, this entire thing here, by itself first. So I need to get rid of the 1750. This is 1750 times this exponential. Opposite of times 1750 would be divide by 1750. So we'll go ahead and do that on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and not simplify here and just do everything in the calculator at the very end. I'll at least reduce my 1750, but I'm going to not reduce this 2500 over 1750, even though I could do so. Okay, so let's write down what we have. So we have 2500 over 1750 is equal to e to the 0 0.032 times t. Now, I need to get rid of the exponential and just work with this 0.032 times t. So it's an exponential base e. How I get rid of an exponential, the opposite operation is a log, and I need to use the correct base. Since this is a base e exponential, I use a base e logarithm. And remember that a base e logarithm is called the natural log. So we will take the natural log of both sides. So we'll have the natural log of 2500 over 1750 is equal to the natural log of e to the 0.032t. Now, remember why we did this. Natural log and exponential base e are inverse operations. This is an exponential base e. This is a log base e. They undo one another. So we actually get that the natural log of 2500 over 1750 is equal to just 0 0.032 times t. And then how do we solve for t? Well, we have 0.032 times t. So to get rid of times 0.032, we just simply need to divide by 0.032. So we'll divide both sides by 0.032, and that will give us our answer for t. t will be ln of 2500 over 1750 divided by 0.032. So let's go ahead and write that. So our t is equal to ln of 2500 over 1750, all of that divided by 0 0.032. If we wanted a decimal approximation for this, let's say to a couple of decimal places, then we could just type this into the calculator. We have an LN button, it's no problem. We'll get that T is about equal to 11.15 years for this to occur if we round to two places. Let's work through just one more of these. Let's say we need a deposit we put in, $40,000. We need it to accumulate to $50,000, and we have to have it happen in four years. So what interest rate do we go shopping for that's required to get us from $40,000 to $50,000 in four years if we're compounding continuously? So again, compounding continuously tells us we're using that. Our deposit of 40,000 is our P, our principal. We need to accumulate to an ending amount, A, of 50,000. Our T this time is four years. We need to know what interest rate, so that tells us right here that we are solving 
for r. If we plug all of that into a equals pert, then we'll get 50,000 is equal to 40,000 rp times e to the rt, so times e to the r times 4. Okay, so we have 50,000 equals 40,000 e to the r times 4. We need our exponential by itself first. Let's go ahead and get rid of this times 40,000. We'll divide by 40,000. So dividing by 40,000. You know, in the last one, I didn't simplify my fraction. I'm at least going to go ahead and take off my zeros here, okay? We can at least do that so it's less writing. So I'm going to say 5 over 4 is equal to e to the, now this is r times 4, instead of saying e to the r4, r4 sounds like a, a car or something, right? So let's say e to the 4r instead. r4 sounds like we're playing battleship or something maybe. Okay, so I have 5 over 4 equals e to the 4r, and I want to get rid of exponential base e. I need to take a logarithm base e to do that. Remember logarithm base e is ln, so we take the natural log of both sides. That will give us ln of 5 over 4 equal to ln of e to the 4r. Remember the reason that we do that is natural log, log base e, is the opposite operation of exponential base e. So here we're just going to get 4r left on the other side. So we get ln of 5 over 4 is equal to 4 times r. And then we'll just simply need to divide both sides by 4, right? So we'll get that r is equal to the natural log of 5 over 4 divided by 4. And if we plug that into a calculator and round to some places, so I'm going to round to several places here, I get that r is about equal to 0 0.055789-ish. And you think about if you want to quote your answer as a rate, what we'll need to do is move that over two places, and then if they say round to a certain number, we'll probably give it as that. So if we were going to answer rounded to two places as a percent, then we want to say that our interest rate is going to be approximately 5.58% here. I think you'll find that once you've done one or two of these, they all solve about the same. We divide both sides, we take a natural log, we divide again, and we either get a decimal from the calculator or we leave it in its exact form. Hopefully this video has helped you solve for something in the exponent when you're solving continuous compound interest equations. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.